Silicon Slope Summit 2023, a world-class event in Salt Lake City, Utah, held in September that attracts renowned global movers and shakers. When you ask yourself why seven times, you start getting out of your head and you get into your heart. Familiar faces and household names, synonymous with cutting-edge businesses and state-of-the-art technologies. There's a huge opportunity for our community to gather. At this year's eighth annual event, professional success in his own right, Keynote, Elder David A. Bednar of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints earned a doctorate in business, taught business management at the University of Arkansas, was a consultant for Walmart founder Sam Walton, and served as president of Brigham Young University, Idaho. Elder Bednar sat down with entrepreneur billionaire and owner of the Utah Jazz basketball team, Ryan Smith. Please welcome Elder David A. Bednar and Ryan Smith. Elder Bednar, you grew up uh, really in, in the business world, in the professional world, in academia. Um, you, you specifically chose to study organizational behavior. Um, what intrigued you about that? When I served as a missionary in Germany, the focus was helping people to change from the inside out as they learn the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Organizational behavior primarily is about helping people change from the outside in, and you need to do both in most instances. So that blending has always been fascinating to me. Everything that, that you do and believe in is this education um, piece. Help us understand why this is so important. Education is a key that opens the door to growth and opportunity. And when I'm talking about education, I don't limit that to just school. If you're relying on what's in books and what other people tell you, you're dependent totally on them. When you don't know what to do, can you ask the questions, can you dig and research and come to know what you need to do? That's what education is. You take the school to a four-year university. Yeah. And I think BYU-Idaho has let out a lot with Pathway and some of the others. Could you share your vision for that? Sure. It never made sense to me that we would have a few brick-and-mortar institutions bring a few students to those places in a worldwide church where there is such a crying need for the key of education to open doors of opportunity. So that's the birth of Pathway, to leverage those resources at these institutions so that they're blessing people all over the world who would never have the opportunity for education, not just school, education. If you were to put time frames in, and you're really working on something for so many people so far down the road, how do you, how do you think about time? We're always thinking 20, 30, 50 years out. Uh, presently, the church has 17 million members. We are in more than 180 nations around the world. By 2050, 2075, 30, 50 million members of the church. You can't run all of that out of Salt Lake City. We have 23 areas, kind of the world divided up into areas. There's an area presidency in each one. And a big thing that we're focusing on now is how do we get more of what we do in Salt Lake into the areas? Not because it has to address cultural needs, that's not the driver, but these are the people closest to the action in the best position to be able to address the needs that the people have. You're getting a lot of heat for people telling you how to spend the money of the church. How, how do you think about what everyone else wants to tell you how so to spend on? Let me address two things. We have four overarching responsibilities. The mission of the church is to help people learn about and live the teachings of Jesus Christ, to share that message with the world, to strengthen and unite families, and to care for the poor and the needy. Now, we do this all over the world. So in terms of scope, that's the answer. And the people who want to tell us how to spend the money, I would just emphasize one undergirding principle. The assets of the church are primarily income consuming. They are not income producing. You feel like it's prudent and wise and... I think it would be imprudent and unwise 
not to have a reserve. What excites you the most? I mean, you get to see the world on such a global level. Like, what's, what's fun? What's exciting? Uh, what makes you smile? My wife and I have had the chance to be in more than 110 different nations in the last 19 years. And to meet people of every religious background, uh, culture, ethnicity. And the, the thing that really gets me so excited is that we are all pretty much the same. Yes, there are lots of differences, but we are far more alike than we are different. That gets me excited. And to be engaged in the work I'm engaged in. People may disagree with our doctrine, but to teach the principles of the gospel of Jesus Christ all over the earth. I love that. The, my California term for that is, that just gets me juiced. I love doing that. <laughs> How do you think about Silicon Slopes? How do you think about the, how do you all think about it from a church standpoint, looking and watching this? It is, and will continue to be, uh, one of the hubs of technological advancement and innovation. Uh, that's a big part of the future world in which we're going to live. A lot of times people think that the, the leaders of the church are kind of uninformed. Uh, we have lots of opportunities to learn from some of the best people in the world about artificial intelligence and some of the latest technological innovations. There could be few things that would help the work of the Lord advance more rapidly than that kind of technological breakthrough with translation. Let's talk politics. You talked about us being more similar than we are different. And, and I've heard, I've definitely heard the church's council is like, we want everyone to, to choose and align with where they feel, but be informed. Um, you could say one thing to this audience about your view of that. What, what would it be? The thing I would say about the politics is that it's very polarizing now. And people are really kind of gravitating to one of two extremes. In the last general conference, President Nelson talked about peacemakers. He has admonished repeatedly and forthrightly the need for the members of the church to strip away racism in any of its forms. And he's done that repeatedly. He's talked about the need for civility. He's talked about the need for people to find common ground instead of just accentuating the places where we differ. So if we stop yelling long enough to listen, I think we can work some things out. We're going into conference this weekend. Can you give every one of you into the scope and reach of what's about to take place this week? Yeah. General conference goes to uh, hundreds of millions of people all over the earth. Uh, over the past number of years, we've uh, been very successful on every continent of uh, having general conference broadcast through local media systems. And increasingly, this happens all over the world. And you're, are you speaking? Yeah, you're speaking, right? Um, I think so. Yeah, I think they're <laughs> gonna have you speak, right? Yeah. Are you more nervous to speak there or here? The honest truth is, I get juiced about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you. It'd be safe to say that I think um, everyone can take something away from this. And I, I couldn't be more honored to, to be here with you. This has been truly enjoyable. And I hope there's been something that's been helpful to other people to learn about, uh, not me, but about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the influence for good that we're trying to be in all the world. So thank you. Awesome. Hey, give it up for Elder Bednar, everyone. Thank you.